Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. My name is Amata and I hope you're having an amazing day. Today we are going to get started straight away with lots of news for the RTX 40 series from NVIDIA, specifically for the RTX 4080 to begin with. So, not only do we have some leaks for what the GPU actually looks like, but also some leaks for the memory configuration that we could see for the final design cards. And today's leaks, or at least this set of them, comes from Mega Size GPU over on Twitter. And of course, you can see everything on screen, and everything will be linked below. So, according to what they are saying, we are going to be seeing two variants for the 4080, a 12GB and then a 16GB variant. And then for the 4090, we are going to see a 24GB reference design. And then they go on to further say that the 12G model has a completely different PCB design to that of the 16 gigabyte model. Now obviously this does make complete sense with what Nvidia have done in the past with the 30 series and of course even before that, so you know that's not exactly shocking. However, in terms of what our sources have been saying, we've been hearing that the 12 gigabyte variant is cancelled and that we will only see a 16 gigabyte variant, but you know, it could entirely be possible that's just going to be launched a bit later, yada yada yada, but at least what we're hearing at the moment it is only going to be a 16 gigabyte variant. Now, of course, I did mention that the actual appearance of the cards had been leaked, and I'm not going to leave you hanging for that any longer. As Kitty Yukio on Twitter, who you should be very familiar with by this point if you've been following our channel for any length of time, you may remember them as Kitty Corgi. Now, they have leaked what is allegedly the RTX 4080 GPU itself. And obviously it looks pretty damn similar to what we saw with the 30 series. The main difference is of course the lettering for the numbers are definitely different to what we saw with the 30 series. However, Nvidia did recently introduce a new font type for its official website and the folks over at videocards.com did do some due diligence and did basically find that the font shown on this GPU is pretty much a perfect match for the new font that NVIDIA appear to be using for the 40 series and beyond, where we see the RTX in bold, and then the actual SKU number in that lighter font. Now obviously, as with anything that's a leak or a rumour, not from the mouth of NVIDIA in this case, we should always treat with caution and the usual pinch of salt TM. So obviously, you know, keep your usual level of skepticism in mind until we actually see the card in Jensen's hands. We should always, you know, pinch of salt TM, as I just said. But we also have more leaks for uh, the RTX 40 series, this time from Grayman. And at the moment, it's a bit unclear as to what model this actually is. Grayman did state, as you can see on screen, that the cooler is actually labelled the 4090 Ti, but it has been blurred because of, you know, having personal information, etc, etc. But Committee and Kimmy has said that it is a custom AD102 version, so we don't really know what this is at the moment. It's clearly not the final design because obviously it's a bit plain looking. You know, if this is like a AIB's custom design, they usually like to you know make things look a little prettier, especially because obviously these things are cheap. You expect something uh, a little less plain than that, I guess you could say. But even though this is clearly a prototype, assuming it course is real, same rules apply to this as of course as before. Still cool that we're seeing all these leaks coming out now, and it does make sense if we follow the re previous reports regarding the alleged release dates for the RTX 40 series. I know I've said this before, but I genuinely think that this upcoming generation for RDNA 3 and, of course, RTX 40 is going to be really, really interesting. All of the rumours surrounding both sets of cards have just been very intriguing, and I definitely do not think this is going to be a boring generation. I just hope it's interesting for the right reasons, and that, that we get interesting cards, interesting products, and not, oh, if you want to buy a GPU, be prepared to cough up a kidney, son. You know, that, that, that would be nice. Of course, we haven't really seen a whole lot, officially speaking, regarding RDX 40 from NVIDIA, but AMD have at least teased RDNA 3 and showed us that very brief demo of Lies of P, which, by the way, looks really, really cool, really promising, and I think if it matches the trailers, it's going to be one of the best Souls likes to come out, but we will see, of course, what happens with that and, of course, the next-gen GPUs. But we're going to move on from NVIDIA to AMD as we had a brand-new benchmark for Zen 4, the Ryzen 9 7950M specifically as we have a new Cinebench R23 benchmark pitting it against the Raptor Lake 13900K flagship CPU. 
And on top of that, we also have an Ada 64 result, but first comes first, let's discuss those Sedibench results, as of course AMD did officially unveil all of the Zen 4 processors and gave us a ton of benchmarks and stuff as well. It's all good to get a more full look at the processors, but of course we're all eagerly awaiting lots and lots of gaming benchmarks, but still some synthetic results are definitely good and I wouldn't say no. So in terms of the results for the first one, we do see a impressive score in the multi-core tests of 38,984 or 38,984 if you prefer, and that is 61% faster than the 5950X, which is a pretty significant uplift in terms of multi-thread, and is 42% better than the 12900K, however, it does lose slightly so slightly to the 13900K with 3% slower performance, but that's almost on par and almost margin of error stuff obviously these are not out yet not complete bios drivers blah 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 you know the drill so let's consider that three percent at least on par and the folks over at wccf tech have very helpfully put together a little bit of a chart here so you can see what these results actually mean with some context and they have also done the 13900K with both limited and unlimited power, just to give you a bit of perspective there. But as I said, there's also some Ada64 results which have been leaked, and that's also from Chip Hell, which was the source for the original leak. I just realized I forgot to mention that, I do apologize. But as you can see on screen, we see the 7950X running at stock, and this is liquid cooling. You know, nothing, no liquid nitrogen or anything, but definitely not air cooled. However, we do see a result here for memory and of course the AD64 cache and this was running DDR5 6000 CL30 memory and you can see the results on screen the CPU has latency of 64.5 NS memory bandwidth of up to 98,156 megabytes on the read speeds. So obviously this is just a single result and obviously we should always wait for reviews and a full complete suite of test synthetic gaming and all that good stuff to get a full complete picture of what is actually going on here. You know, so far, Ryzen 7000, Zen 4, whatever you want to call it, is looking pretty damn promising, very impressive indeed. And this just kind of continues that, where it's a significant improvement over the Zen 3 5950X and a significant improvement over that of Old Lake, but obviously it is a much closer battle with a Raptor Lake, but we should obviously wait to see what goes on with reviews for both sets of CPUs before we make our final judgement call. I am curious though how many of you are thinking of jumping to Zen 4 or Raptor Lake, you know, so let us know your opinion, and who is sticking with what they currently have, and if you actually bought like a Zen 3 or 12900K or, or other Old Lake processor, I wouldn't even really blame you for sticking with what you currently have, as impressive and exciting as both sets do look. Now I want to finish things up with a tweet from Harukazi who said that in Zen 4 new chipset driver X670E it improves average game FPS a single digit percent which um yeah I thought he was going to write home about this one I don't know about you guys obviously this is not a public release as they themselves point out and I would imagine that when it, I would hope at least and that we will see the final public release it will be more of an increase than a single digit percent but it's a uh, Hmm, <laughs> concerning, let's just put it that way. Anyway guys, that is me done for this video, a bit of a quick one I know, but I hope you had a great weekend. I myself just got back from a weekend away, so I am refreshed and ready and raring to go, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.